every trip is very meaningful for me. So in 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 form of business impact or is it in form from giving back or is it in form from changing people's life? Changing people's life, let's do that one. And that's that's a better <laughs> story to tell, right? Yes. Uh, Maybe uh, the last, you know, I had so many, but I'll pick up the last one, which mm -hmm. was the thing. I just went to um, North Uganda mm -hmm. and landed in Gula, probably. You know, just see look, um, Uganda here to the Sudanese border. Mm -hmm. And here, there are about, people don't know it, there are about um, 1.5 million refugees mm -hmm. who came from South Sudan and from DRC, Dominican Republic Congo. Some of them were uh, ch child soldiers. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was amazing how we built something there together with Forrest Whitaker, the actor Forrest Whitaker, uh, a program to change that uh, people's life and educating from a child, they were brainwashed child soldiers, mm -hmm. fighting for really nothing, to be a peacemaker actually. Mm -hmm. They are educating peace and I saw the change, we had to go to school for years mm -hmm. and um, then what, they, what happens is that these people are supporting their loved ones with peace with Western Union using Western Union and generating also you know, um, life for the others. So it's a win-win-win situation, it's win for Western Union obviously, but you have to invest in it once. The people never forget what Bestinian done for them. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, it's a driving the shareholder value. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spent there like three days, and um, that uh, talking to these people, um, how they, I saw how they change over the years, the young people, mm -hmm. and some of them studied business. I uh, had a class there, a day class, uh, talking about the US corporation, what means the public company, mm -hmm. and you think that all knowledge is here? Wrong. Mm -hmm. They know exactly how a, you know, how a company runs, they read the social media hubs, mm -hmm. they study it, they exactly know what's the short-term thinking versus long-term thinking is, mm -hmm. what the uh, uh, market cap is, and uh, we went all this uh, through that, and it was a kind of, you know, a lecturing them in a kind of a tent, Yeah, they're sitting there, and that was my last trip. I had this trip behind you, that was amazing also, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's in the Bihar area of India, mm -hmm. this is here, sorry, this is here, mm -hmm. Um, and these are women um, which covered their face, not because of religion, they were afraid to show their face because they didn't have self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And But it has nothing to, they are not Muslim, but it has nothing to do with uh, religion thing. Mm -hmm. And this woman then we you know, invested there together with our partners, with our agents, and um, these women are all now stood up. I think we should show some pictures, I'm so proud of that. And told me their stories. There were about mm -hmm. 500 of them. Yeah. They, you know, were a group and were telling their uh, success stories, how they generate revenue, how they generate uh, jobs, mm -hmm. and how they give back. And they were all entrepreneurial, and we were sitting and celebrating with them. And we changed uh, together. They changed. Not only we changed their uh, life, I think they changed also my life. They changed you know, everything. I've been now 18 years here, but every time I learn from this kind of people. And you know, sometimes you sit in the C suite, you call it C suite, or yeah. the corner of this. Um, you know, there is a perception from outside that these guys have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a good uh, way of running a business. Mm -hmm. Go out there, understand, they talk to them, and you just empower your customers, they make you successful. Then. That's awesome, that's great. Yeah. That's the two, but maybe example, because you told me that's in the last one, and there are mm -hmm. thousands of them. <laughs> yeah, and now to switch to your gears a little bit entirely, so you've been all over the world. What makes Denver unique? Well, first of all, uh, I came with perceptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what were the perceptions? Talk about that. Perception was uh, for me, you know, outside, you know, um, Midwest mm -hmm. was wrong. It was West. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one thing. 
I thought that it's a kind of, I don't say it's a, it's an oil town mm -hmm. on the oil and some farms are here mm -hmm. and they won't be international and the people are thinking very uh, narrow-minded. Mm -hmm. That's why my perception. Yeah. It's wrong. As I said earlier, that's why the map has <laughs> it. Don't see the world with perceptions. Yeah, can you talk about the map? Um. Yeah, uh, well, this map is, as you could see, it's upside down. Many people say that. I don't see it as upside down. It's um, who tells that north is on the top and south is in the bottom. And many people visit my office, they say, hey, this map is wrong. I said, no. <laughs> The world is all about perception. If you sit in the moon, you cannot look at the uh, from moon the world, and you will see maybe South, uh, South Africa on the top from your perspective, right? So, and this shows also about pers pers uh, perspectives, right? And my perspective of Denver was uh, coming here, and then uh, first I you know met obviously that was very fast. I met some people, and mm -hmm. one of the most interesting people I met was. My, first month or second month, uh, he was still the mayor of Denver, mm -hmm. and he was doing a campaign for um, for for being a governor. Was John Hickenlooper? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was funny because you know, as a European perception, yeah. I came here with tie like you know, yeah. <laughs> thing and a very thing, and he was in in, in his campaign office, sitting actually on a, on a, in a container because there was no places, and the students were calling. You know, raising funds, I guess, yeah. to support that. And so we, and you know, we, I come in, get out of the car, come in, walk in, Mr. Governor, and he's he's he's, he's in his jeans there and say, Hey, Hikmet, you must be the new guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, we were looking around, and I said, Yes. And there was no, there were no chairs, and he asked me to sit on the floor. So we were sitting on the floor, and first meeting, we were talking, and he became. <laughs> Kind of friends, you know, and I don't have an agenda because I am not a, U a green card holder, not a U.S. citizen, so I can't even contribute to mm -hmm. that, right? And nothing. So it was a good, good meeting. We and that was my first perception. You know, perception was different, and there was a quite smart guy mm -hmm. uh, going for the governor, trying to change, uh, you know, Colorado. And after eight years, I have to say that he did it. Mm -hmm. uh, Colorado has been a fantastic place for us Western Union, mm -hmm. uh, for other companies also. And over the time, like the first time I met John Hickenlooper, I met also other people. And the humbleness of the Colorado, don't showing what they know, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like, hey, I am here, you know, I show you my mm -hmm. money or I show you how smart I am. It's not, you really start to talk to them and you realize that how smart, how open-minded the Coloradans are, and how friendly they are. And they ask you, how are you doing? You have to take a time. They really mean it. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you have to answer a question. Yeah. It's not like in other parts of the world saying, how are you? It's just a you know, fake question, but this is a real question. And you take time, and they are interested on you. So that's changed my perception about Colorado totally. That's awesome. And now Colorado, you know, over the last eight years, since um, it's grown so much, some people I've talked to are concerned about the pace of growth. Do you have any concerns about the pace of growth for your employees' sake or any other like concerns with that? Well, uh, pace of growth uh, is, you know, it has two sides always, yeah. of course, right? I mean, you know, we've, I'm, I'm always worried about environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's probably the worry part is the you know how we can cope with the environment mm -hmm. and Colorado is famous for the environment and mm -hmm. you know it's such a beautiful place mm -hmm. that you want to be outside and let's yeah. don't destroy it mm -hmm. um, I think public transportation is something that Colorado as a European I can see it as a you know, global <laughs> travel I can see it has to invest mm -hmm. uh, more uh, I believe that the train connections to mm -hmm. Colorado Springs or to uh, uh, you know, to the mountains mm -hmm. uh, along the I-70 has to be invested. It's a hard thing to do. It's a huge capital investment, but I think the Coloradans should uh, should step up and you know say that okay, we are mm -hmm. love our country and do that. And you, that could be only done by um, by tax income. Mm -hmm. And yeah. tax income only works if you grow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And exactly, that's, yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's, that's the, the budget will only grow. And so it's a really a both thing. And 
Mm-hmm. I'm not worried about the growth of Colorado. I think has been the traffic and everything mm-hmm. has been de- definitely something which is <coughs> uh, also worrying for our employees. But the you know we are moving to an, our new headquarters, mm-hmm. and one of the reasons why we have chosen probably the main reason why we have chosen the headquarters where it is mm-hmm. it's just at the train station, mm-hmm. and we have this green environment uh, yeah. uh, thing. We are asking our people to use. The, uh, the light rail. Mm-hmm. We are asking to park the cars wherever they are to use that, mm-hmm. and it's just two minutes walk mm-hmm. to their office, and uh, it's you no, know, there's no, you know, there, it's great actually. So, I think Colorado has to do that, and yeah. the other thing is obviously um, it's been raining these days, but the water is a big issue. Yeah, and that's something that I think that Colorado have to think about that how yeah. to you know think about. Just to, pro- I think, you know, make the growth happen, but just protect your environment. It's so beautiful here. Yeah, definitely. And can you talk about it as a company, what you hope Western Union can do to help the environment? I think we, you know, obviously we are a financial service company. Yeah, we are yeah. moving, <laughs> uh, moving information globally, worldwide. Uh, we don't have a big um, footprint, right? Yeah. But we do. I mean, uh, you know, one example has been, obviously, that we have chosen it's on the right rail station, but we also... Uh, you know, try to uh, put all plastic balls not in the office anymore. Yeah. Uh, we educate our, we not education, but we encourage our people to live uh, in a better way, to, you know, to drive a smaller cars, mm-hmm. to, you know, one of the reasons um, I, I, I drive a Tesla car, electric car, is that to show, yeah. you know, to the uh, people. We have a, a West Union bus installed from mm-hmm. here to the light rail. Um, you know, to put, take your people and it's free of charge that mm-hmm. our people can use the West Union bus. And at the same time, it's a, it's a kind of advertisement because the bus is all the time moving, right? Mm-hmm. So these are the things we as West Union do that. Then the other thing is really the education part, talking, yeah. talking, talking. And uh, these are big, uh, big uh, thing. What are other thing is also, look, happy employees, good performance. Yes. Uh, normally, what happens is that, you know, like my current office, the executives sit in the best offices, right? Yeah. Uh, what we have done is that we put our employees on the window side with the nice view, mountain view, mm-hmm. Colorado view, everything, and the C level employees are sitting in the back and having that, you know, that uh, kind of environment we created at this office makes the employees more happy. Everyone in financial services is talking about, you know, innovations in finance, fintech, especially yeah. with blockchain, everything like that. Um, Western Union recently filed a patent regarding blockchain. Can you talk about um, how you see the role of blockchain, blockchain, you know, changing financial services? And also, in addition, if there's any other innovations that you see um, that are outside of blockchain that you see transforming mm-hmm. financial services. You know, blockchain is a big word. Right? It is, it is, yes. <laughs> so I think uh, you have to narrow it where you use it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the information flow with blockchain is much easier. Mm-hmm. And yeah. obviously you don't have the middleman, you have the transparency and everything, right? Yeah. Um, you, will, uh, you will find it funny, but the first um, blockchain, or not the blockchain, the information flow, uh, or the fl- first cryptocurrency was created by West Union. Mm-hmm. Let me tra- uh, take you to a transaction. If you want to send money from Denver mm-hmm. uh, to Vietnam, you get six uh, the dollar. You send hundred dollars. You yep. get a ten-digit number. Mm-hmm. It's one-time issued. It's a digital currency. Mm-hmm. It's called MTCN, and the same digital currency transfer all the way to uh, Vietnam. Mm-hmm. And we pay out with the same digital currency, turn that to the local currency in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And we do that 31 times every second Mm -hmm. in 131 currencies and move about worldwide $300 billion. It's a huge cryptocurrency information flowing around worldwide on more than 40,000 corridors or whatever that is, the number is, right? Mm -hmm. So um, within that environment, you know, the blockchain has to be used where it's really a need, where the information mm-hmm. flow is not working very well. Yeah. Uh, we are trying, we are doing some, uh, some experiments with uh, like Ripple, right? Mm-hmm. Or l- like uh, with some Bitcoins and with some cryptocurrencies, some mm-hmm. blockchains. We did not find it yet, the, uh, the environment which makes us 
makes our transactions more efficient. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that we are in our industry, the highest margin in the part and the largest, and we are moving money in a very easy way. That helps us, uh, and we are always looking for opportunity. Yeah. One of them is blockchain. Um, what the next generation is though, um, you know, there has been a lot of money invested in the fintech company, yeah, FinTech, a lot of yeah. bets. Um, I think it's coming to a phase that um, the investors are looking on the return also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I think that it's the pressure will increase on the fintech industry, especially on the startups, mm -hmm. uh, to get the money back. They have to make money because it's not only the technology. Mm -hmm. Fintech, especially in the cross-border money transfer, it's so complex. Mm -hmm. uh, to drop money, in my example, in Vietnam, you need a yeah. license in Vietnam. Yeah. It's not you know sitting on a garage and building something new and you have it. Mm -hmm. And it's really the complexity. And the complexity of that business is also a kind of a competitive advantage for us. Yeah. Uh, we build it mm -hmm. and we use the technology. The technology is very important for us and it's actually where we've been. Mm -hmm. Our uh, online um, mobile apps and our online bestunion.com yeah. uh, is currently rocking. Yeah. Uh, the first quarter growth was about, about 20%, the mm -hmm. quarter before about 20, 20, yeah. 20, and we are in 40, more than 40 countries, mm -hmm. uh, on with our apps and with our uh, mobile.com, mm -hmm. transferring money to 200 countries mm -hmm. in seconds. So while you, you are uh, riding the light rail mm -hmm. and you have a need to send money to Argentina, you could use your phone and send money immediately from your phone to Argentina and somebody in seconds can pick up the money from, uh, from your money in, in your loved one in Argentina. So this is something we invest a lot mm -hmm. and we uh, have built uh, something here uh, huge and it's growing very well. The third one is that uh, it, the innovation doesn't start uh, stop at Western.com or digital thing. The third one is that we are in the new office actually creating a, a kind of an innovation center Innovate. Oh, cool! and um, we are working with um, um, you know with some companies in the in this area which I can't disclose yet but so like you're you've partnered with maybe like some startups to try up something yes some cool. startups and we are investing there and we want to learn maybe you lose maybe you win but it's not a big investment for us it's just yeah. a learning from that because i have to say that you know startups have that dynamic yeah and makes us thinking differently as a big company yeah and these people are innovative and these are something that we are doing and uh, we're gonna we're gonna have our own space here where people can uh, experiment where people can come outside and be sponsored by western union that's awesome. And yeah, can you talk about, so, um, you know, Western Union is a very large established company. Can you talk about how do you, um, how do you keep that innovative spirit? Is it through the <laughs> partnerships or is it through, you know, because I know there's always the concern. You know, change become, is not easy. As yeah. You know. <laughs> as, as you become very large and established, change can be very hard. And can you talk mm -hmm. about, like, how did you convince your employees that the internet yeah, was here to change stay? Change is not easy, but we have done successfully. Uh, what we have done is that, you know, as every uh, big corporation has it. If you have a very stable big business, mm -hmm. how do you add a second leg is always a, yeah. a tough one, you know. And uh, at the same time delivering your uh, shareholder value. Yeah. Uh, so what we have done is that we really um, p build a plan, an example which we are very successful, is our Westin.com business. Yeah. We build a plan and we promise that, you know, we're going to disclose that plan to our shareholders with the growth rates. Yeah. And we really put our own budget around that, own focus around that, a kind of a, uh, and this this unit reported directly to me in the beginning. Yeah. Although it was very small, I said, this is gonna be our bed, and it's protected by West Union. I'm gonna have my uh, daily overviews. Mm -hmm. I have my eight o'clock daily calls every morning. About for the internet? Mm -hmm. Just on that, website, just yeah. on that, until then it went, you know, and then it started to doing very well. And that was weekly calls, no, monthly calls. No, and the last was that uh, two years ago, it was integrated in the main business mm -hmm. because it was a part of that. And that's exactly what we are doing also with startups. Yeah. Another one is that we call the uh, lean management tool called WuWay. What called what? WuWay, West Union Way. Oh, good W-U-Way, okay. mm -hmm. WuWay, West Union Way. And uh, it's, uh, it's a really, uh, uh, lean management tool like yeah. Kazan events, like Six Sigma tools, mm -hmm. and we implemented again 
that was protected under the CEO view, daily calls, mm -hmm. weekly calls, and now it's a business as usual, it's integrated and it's really the productivity and looking at the existing business, how you be more productive with the saved money investing in innovation. Yeah. That's awesome. And then um, as far as, can you just talk about Denver seems to be more and more becoming a tech hub. Has that influenced at all, you know, trying to get startups here? Have you convinced startups from other places to come here? Are you, are you mostly drawing from talent that is already in Denver? Well, uh, we do have, you know, we have a global footprint. Yeah. I mean, being honest, we our headquarters and innovation center is here, but uh, our digital business headquarters is in the Bay Area. Oh. Uh, you know, we have globally um, 12,000 employees, mm -hmm. about 1,500 of them are in Denver. In Denver, 1,300, yeah. 1,500, I don't yeah. know the last number. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, these are the innovations. So, we really follow where the talent is, mm -hmm. and the, you know, with our brand name, talent comes also to us mm -hmm. with ideas. Yeah. Many companies are knocking on our doors and saying that, hey, with your uh, global reach, we have this idea, you wanna test that? And we really do that. And we did develop products in Lithuania. We develop uh, products in Chile. Mm -hmm. We develop products in Africa, recently in Morocco. Yeah. No, uh, you know, that's, that has been. But uh, the real management, the headquarter management, the shareholder value is driven by Denver. Denver, mm -hmm. yeah, Because the head of strategy, for instance, mm -hmm. and innovation sits in Denver. Mm -hmm. And it, I just want to make sure I'm understanding. So in the new, in your new office, you're going to have an innovation center as well. A new innovation center or is yeah, it the innovation, one? kind of innovation hub. Yeah. And we'll be in the Colorado area. The innovation uh, experiments will be, I can't disclose the name now yet. We'll be in, in Colorado area. Awesome. Well, let, let the business journal know once you are ready to Definitely will do. You will be very proud of that. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, can you talk about... Um, you know, do you have any advice for other CEOs or just people that, you know, with the pace of digital change, do you have any advice for them for managing that and kind of trying to take the right risks, if that makes sense, you know, because there's so much hope around new technology and not all of it's going to work out. Um, but do you have any advice on how to manage the change? I think, you know, technology is there, but end of the day, it's all about a business plan mm -hmm. and um, the technology innovation should be driven by customer needs yeah. not by corner office mm -hmm. so that was our biggest uh, yeah. thing we asked our customers in India <laughs> we asked our customers in in Mexico mm -hmm. and they told us they they want to use their mobile apps mm -hmm. and that will be my first advice not uh, don't drive you know first of all listen what the customer tells and then make their idea your idea mm -hmm. um, don't be smarter than the customers yeah. <laughs> customers are the smarters and if you make their idea your idea then you really have that that what i learned from the customer customer was telling us hey i want to send money via mobile phone mm -hmm. make it happen i want to send money not only to in the us i want to send money mm -hmm. to uh, tajikistan mm -hmm. and make it happen that's what we have done mm 